CCTV News gathers information from town meetings and events, departmental updates, and COVID-19 here in York County and Berwick. BCTV News will be shown daily at 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. on Comcast channels 95 and 22, as well as streaming at www.berwicktv.org. It will also be available on demand and via our YouTube channel. October is Cybersecurity Month. The Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, or CISA, began a campaign called Stop, Think, Connect. This program aims to increase public awareness and understanding of cyber threats. They want to empower you, small businesses, students, educators, and parents on how to be safer and more secure online. Suggestions include create secure passwords and do not share them. Keep your antivirus software up to date. Never give out your personal information over the phone or in an email. Do not click on pop-ups. Perhaps install a pop-up blocker program. When using social networks, use the privacy settings to protect your personal information. And do not click on unknown links. These include strange friend requests, messages, and even innocent looking videos. The world is online and we're all connected. While there's a lot to explore and discover, we each need to do our part to keep the internet safe. Cybersecurity starts with you. Learn how you can stay safe online at dhs.gov slash stop think connect. The town clerk, Patricia Murray, has established additional hours for voter registration and early voting. Today, Saturday, October 24th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Thursday, October 29th from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m and Friday, October 30th, from 12.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. Voters may vote in the presence of the clerk during any one of these days, as well as their regular weekday hours. These regular hours of operation include Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Tuesday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., and Friday, 8 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. The final day for in-person absentee voting is Friday, October 30th. Don't forget to get your Halloween photos in for the Berwick Recreation Online Costume Contest. Deadline is October 30th, and winners from the MSAD60 area will be chosen on October 31st. Use the hashtag BerwickLovesHalloween when posting your pics to either the Berwick Recreation Facebook page or Berwick Community TV Facebook page. This is also a reminder that due to the pandemic, the town of Berwick is discouraging trick-or-treating this year. If you do go out, please remember to use hand sanitizer frequently, socially distance, and wear a mask whenever possible to protect others. Homeowners who are not interested in having trick-or-treaters should turn off their outside lights on both the 30th and the 31st. Code Enforcement Officer Jen McCabe talks about the most frequently asked questions. What requires a permit? Hi, my name is Jennifer McCabe. I'm the Code Enforcement Officer and Licensed Plumbing Inspector for the Town of Berwick. We're doing this segment today to answer some frequently asked questions in our code office. So, the number one main question we get is what requires a permit? We're going to actually start by saying what doesn't require a permit. Fences, six feet or below. Do they require a setback requirement? The answer is no. Some other things that don't require permits is reshingling roofs, simple construction inside like paint or updates um, along the lines of that. Anything structurally that you change inside or outside of your home will require a permit. Some other things that don't require a permit are walkways, concrete patios, um, things of that nature. 
When we talk about permits and requirements, we talk about things that would require an inspection. Our inspections are setbacks and erosion control, framing, rough plumbing, final plumbing, insulation, and final inspection. Usually during our framing inspection, we like to see rough plumbing at that time, and usually during our final inspection, we will see final plumbing at that time, just to make sure there's nothing that's leaking or giving the house a problem before we pass it on to the new homeowners or your new bathroom if you're putting on an addition or you're just remodeling. So that's why we do that. So another thing that doesn't require a permit here in the town of Berwick is anything mechanical or electrical. Um, as of now, but keep checking back because that is going to change in the near future. We're just, we're just not exactly sure the exact date of that happening so far. Any documents or paperwork you need at this time can be downloaded and printed from our town website, borowickmaine.org. If you go under departments, you will find code enforcement. Go ahead and click on that and you should be able to find any information you're looking for. If you are looking for a land use ordinance or any rules or regulations that the town of Brook may have, that's actually under community planning, um, under land use ordinance. You can check that out. That document is pretty lengthy. So if you do control find and you type exactly what you're looking for, it will actually bring you to the certain pages that you need instead of you scrolling through um, hundreds of pages. As the code enforcement officer, I am continuing to work remotely at this time. I can be reached on my cell phone at 207-752-6103 or via email at code at berwickmaine.org. If you should have any further questions or you want to discuss something, upcoming projects that you may be doing in your house, um, feel free to reach out at any time. I really look forward to meeting with you and working with you. Is your vehicle registered? If not, then you should know on Tuesday, October 20th, Secretary Matthew Dunlop released renewal and new vehicle registration deadlines. In Governor Mills' new executive order, Maine motorists whose registrations have expired or who have purchased a new vehicle during the pandemic should follow rules for registering their vehicle. A vehicle purchased between January 1st, 2020 and March 15th, 2020, and vehicles with registrations that expired before March 15th must register immediately. Vehicles purchased between March 15th through May 31st, 2020, and vehicles with registrations that expired during that period need to register no later than December 18th, 2020. Vehicles purchased June 1st through September 30th, 2020, and vehicles with registrations that expired during that period need to register no later than February 16th, 2021. Vehicles purchased on or after October 1st, 2020, and vehicles with registrations that have expired during that period register as soon as possible in accordance with Maine Motor Vehicle Law. Private sale vehicles cannot operate without registration plates. The vehicle must be registered to legally operate on Maine roads. And temporary plates on new vehicles are valid through the expiration date on the plate and the vehicle must be registered prior to the temporary plate's expiration to avoid penalties. Vehicles with registrations that expire in October should be registered ASAP or no later than October 31st to avoid penalty penalties. These deadlines apply to all motor vehicles and trailers operate on main roadways and to temporary registrations. Don't forget, main motorists who are processing renewals may go to the Rapid Renewal online service. That's www.main.gov slash online backslash BMV backslash rapid renewal. Documents needed for dealer sales. Your bill of sale, your sales agreement from the dealer. Blue title application if the vehicle is a 1995 model, year or newer. Evidence of insurance, an ID card, policy or binder. White and yellow copy of registration application and excise tax receipt. And your vehicle mileage 
Documents needed for a private sale are very similar, except there will be no blue title application, and you will need the vehicle title signed over to the new owner from the previous owner. Registrations can be processed at the Berwick Town Hall during normal business hours. BCTV is starting something new. We're going to give you the police logs for the previous month. So this is from 9.15 through 10.18. On Tuesday, September 15th, Broderick Eck, 20, of Barrington, was arrested at about 10 p.m. on warrant. Mr. Eck was bailed and released. He is scheduled for arraignment in Springville on 11 19 2020. On Wednesday, September 16th, Philip Fife, 32 of Berwick, was charged at about 9.15 p.m. with operating an unregistered motor vehicle. Mr. Fife was summonsed and released. He is scheduled for arraignment in Springville on 12-15-2020. On Sunday, September 20th, Mark Lopez, 35 of Summersworth, was charged at about 5.46 p.m. with operating without a license. Mr. Lopez was summonsed and released. He is scheduled for arraignment in Springville on 12-15-2020. Also on the 20th, a juvenile was charged at about 9.24 p.m. with criminal speed. The juvenile was summonsed and released. The juvenile is scheduled for arraignment in Springville on 12-15-2020. On Wednesday, September 23rd, Sherry Roya, 56 of Berwick, was charged at about 7.52 p.m. with assault and refusing to submit to arrest or detention. Miss Roya was bailed and released. She is scheduled for arraignment in Springvale on 12-15-2020. On Thursday, September 24th, Sarah Cloutier, 35 of Sanford, was charged at about 2.45 p.m. with receiving stolen property. Miss Claudia was summonsed and released, and she is scheduled for arraignment in Alfred on 12-11-2020. On Saturday, September 26, Travis Dennis, 43, of Berwick, was charged at about 5.45 p.m. with motor vehicle violation resulting in death. Mr. Dennis was summonsed and released. He is scheduled for arraignment in Springville on 12-15-2020. On Sunday, September 27th, Kenneth Sturgill, 40, of Dover, was charged at about 10 p.m. with operating under the influence. No test. Mr. Sturgill was bailed and released. He is scheduled for arraignment in Springville on 12-15-2020. On Monday, September 28th, Jason Dodge, 49, of Berwick, was charged at about 12.01 a.m. with failure to give notice of accident by quickest means. Mr. Dodge was summonsed and released. He is scheduled for arraignment in Springvale on 12.15.2020. Also on Monday the 28th, Andrew Beasley, 29 of Berwick, was charged at about 11.56 p.m. with operating an unregistered motor vehicle. Mr. Beasley was summonsed and released and he is scheduled for arraignment in Springville on 12-15-2020. On Tuesday, September 29th, Alva Beale, 19, of Farmington, New Hampshire, was charged at about 6.23 a.m. with fail to register motor vehicle greater than 150 days. Mr. Beale was summonsed and released, and he is scheduled for arraignment in Springville on 12-15-2020. On Thursday, October 1st, Samantha Pinkard, 33, of Berwick, was charged at about 8.10 p.m. with assault. Miss Pinkard was bailed and released. She is scheduled for arraignment in Springville on 12-15-2020. On Friday, October 2nd, Frank McNeese, 52, of Kittery, was charged at about 1.30 p.m. with assault. Mr. McNeese was summonsed and released and he is scheduled for arraignment in Springville on 12-15-2020. On Saturday, October 3rd, Stephanie Stevens, 41, of Berlin, New Hampshire, was charged at about 12.48 p.m. with operating after suspension. Ms. Stevens was summonsed and released, and she is scheduled for arraignment in Springville on 12-15-2020. On Sunday, October 4th, 
Kyle Rockwood, 27, of York, was arrested about 2.14 p.m. on a warrant. Mr. Rockwood was also charged with eluding an officer. He was bailed and released. He is scheduled for arraignment in Alfred on 12-11-2020. Saturday, October 10th, Jared Belair, 31, of Berwick, was charged at about 11.15 a.m. with theft by unauthorized use. Mr. Belair was summonsed and released. He is scheduled for arraignment in Springville on 12-15-2020. Also on Saturday the 10th, George Morris, 59, of Dover, was charged at about 4.17 p.m. with operating without a license. Mr. Morris was summonsed and released. He is scheduled for arraignment in Springville on 12-15-2020. On Sunday, October 11th, Kylie Richardson, 20, of Stratford, New Hampshire, was charged at about 4.45 p.m., with the illegal transportation of drugs by a minor. Miss Richardson was summonsed and released. She is scheduled for arraignment in Springvale on 12-15-2020. On Monday, October 12th, Tyler Elliott, 23, of South Berwick, was charged at about 10.53 a.m. with operating without a license. Miss Elliott was summonsed and released, and he is scheduled for arraignment in Springvale on 12-15-2020. On Thursday, October 15th, Darcy Bray, 39, of Center Ossipee, New Hampshire, was arrested about 9.49 a.m. on a warrant. Miss Bray was bailed and released, and she is scheduled for arraignment in Alfred on 12-11-2020. Also on Thursday the 15th, Matthew LeBurge, 35, of Lebanon, was arrested about 9.51 a.m. on a warrant. Mr. LeBurge was bailed and released, and he is scheduled for arraignment in Alfred on 12-11-2020. Again on the 15th, Cody Wallace, 28, of Rochester, was arrested about 9 p.m. on a warrant. Mr. Wallace was also charged with possession of Scheduled W drugs, fugitive from justice and refusing to submit to arrest or detention. Mr. Wallace was transported to the York County Jail, and he is scheduled for arraignment on 12-15-2020. On Sunday, October 18th, Christopher LaValle, 18, of South Berwick, was charged at about 1.29 p.m. with operating without a license. Mr. LaValle was summonsed and released. He is scheduled for arraignment in Springvale on 12-15-2020. Snippets is back. Get your one-page summary on information and resources in Berwick. Read about what town departments are doing, votes and discussions made, and get the dates for office closures and special events. Sometimes it also includes little bits of historical information about Berwick. Hard copies of snippets can be picked up at the Town Hall, the Berwick Public Library, and the Berwick Post Office. You can view it online at www.berwickmaine.org. Scroll down and click on Berwick News. The House of Hope Mission serves meals on Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays from 4.45 p.m. to 6.15 p.m. at the Old Catholic Church located on Sawmill Hill Road in Berwick. On Thursday, they were seeking help with supplies for their pantry. They need cereal, peanut butter, 16-ounce chunky, please, jelly, chicken noodle soup, vegetable soup, flavored rice, kid snacks, and toilet paper. The Table of Plenty offers drive through take-home meals at the Berwick United Methodist Church on School Street every Wednesday from 4.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. There are no requirements for either of these programs, no paperwork, and no questions asked. They simply provide meals to all who come. As of Friday, October 23rd, York County had 1,357 cases, with 1,210 confirmed and 147 probable. There have been 1,196 recoveries, 102 hospitalizations, and 20 deaths. COVID-19 data for Berwick as of October 18th. We had 32 cumulative, probable, and confirmed cases. BCTV News is a recap of meetings, events, and town happenings. If you have a news item that you think we should cover, send your request to bctv at berwickmaine.org. 
BCTV is completely funded through franchise fees from Comcast. We are a nonprofit entity and we are bound by the rules established for public access stations by the FCC. Berwick residents who subscribe to Comcast may watch our public educational videos on Channel 22 and our government meetings, departmental, and informational videos on Channel 95. Both channels run 24-7 and are streamed at www.berwicktv.org.